Oh my god. Let's talk about email copywriting. Why are you running? Why are you running? I'm making a video about emails. <laughs> now that's how you open a loop. So before we end the fake start of the show and begin the real start of the show, I'm gonna answer a quick question to Chris. Will this be recorded? So here's how this, this all operates. It's gonna be up on Twitch for two weeks. At the end of two weeks, our beautiful, sensual, sexual, gorgeous video editor, Noah. He is going to take the feed uh, from both Twitch and Zoom, and he's going to interlace them together to create and edit it down to a full episode that's gonna be on YouTube. The raw stream, after that two weeks that it's up for free, will be available to patreon.com slash the copy that show supporters. He and I actually just collaborated. He just updated and put all of our raw streams, all the episodes up onto YouTube. And I just updated all the playlists so that all the raw episodes of copy that, like for example, if you weren't happy with the 20 minute edited succinct, non rambly, non unfocused episodes of copy that, and you want the raw unfiltered pure id, like the amygdala of copy that <laughs> you just want it drip fed into your bloodstream. Well, that's available <laughs> and it's all in a, a, a playlist. I, want, I wonder what would happen if you just play the copy that streams while you're sleeping. I wonder if that would have a psychological effect. Uh, probably not a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I think th that awkward joke is going to be our perfect transition to the real start of the show. <laughs> hello, everybody. Everybody, hello. Welcome to Cake and Sodomy. No, it is a, the copy that show. The one, the only copy that show that takes place on the first Monday of every month at 9 a.m. on Twitch TV, featuring four copywriters by the names of Sean, Alex, Luke, and Rod. This is going to be a really exciting episode uh, because we're going to be talking about something that uh, I think we can all speak about fairly well, and which is extremely applicable to anybody learning copywriting, like from scratch, from zero. And that is emails magic emails email copywriting that is what the subject is about and i do not blame copywriters for wanting to learn emails because they're short and they're relatively easy to get a foothold in uh hard to master easy to get started with and I don't blame businesses for wanting to pay a lot for them either. According to some survey that is probably vastly outdated at this point, they discovered that every $1 invested in building an email list and marketing to that email list returned $38 in terms of revenue. This episode is going to be about the basics. We've already had another video, which, you know, link in the description about uh, the DIC method, uh, the DIC formula, and also like what the basics of emails are. We're going to go over more of those basics in this episode today and we are going to be talking about tactics, strategies, and tips that we've learned over the course of our careers for writing and selling while performing emails. So let's get started. Just to point out that we are each in fairly different spaces uh, for different reasons. So there's some crossover between us, but Sean is obviously quite heavy in financial. I'm quite heavy in e-commerce, so physical products. Rod has to deal with like live actual campaigns of especially in the political space. Uh, yeah. And then Luke has a lot of SaaS experience and is also doing financial as well. We all use emails in different industries, but we all use emails because emails are just universally applicable. What is an email and why is it so universally used by every industry in marketing? So an email is some mail that you receive electronically <laughs> or via E. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's my understanding of it. Emails are great because in 2022, pretty much everyone has an email. It is like the Facebook before Facebook of how to get to people. And so one, the potential to reach people is very large to unlike mm. a social media it is much more intimate of a space people are less hesitant to give out their their email information and so if you are able to obtain it when you're speaking to them directly in that context the messages feel often more salient it's such an easy channel to start with like lots of people you know everyone receives me emails every day right like everyone's used to receive uh, either messages from friends, family, brands. It's like, it's it's an easy way to reach people without being too intrusive, 
And it's a really, really good way to make lots of return on your marketing. It's basically just very short form copy that usually just has one goal to get people to your store, your landing pages, or to get them engaged with your content in any way or form. Email is effectively just the new form of, of mail, of, of post here in the UK. It's, and the way you need to think about it is your inbox, it's like a letterbox. Stuff comes in and you delete the stuff or you throw away the stuff that isn't like relevant to you or doesn't intrigue you to open it. Because when we actually look at advertising mediums, you look at say uh, Facebook, for example, a lot of people will say, oh yeah, don't use like Facebook anymore. Uh, Cause like it's, it's harder to get, you know, CPA is really high and it's difficult to get um, good returns on Facebook advertising. And it has peaks and it has troughs and people won't use it so much. Uh, TikTok will probably be the same. Like at the moment, everyone's flooding to it. In a few years time, the, the use of it probably won't be as high. Something that has stayed continuous all throughout that is email, just like regular mail was for a hundred years. Like, cause that is really the only way to reach someone directly where they live, where they are. And email is the same. Email is that thing that it's personal, it's yours, it's your letterbox. And you're not on another platform when you're using it. It's coming directly to you, coming through your letterbox and you have to look at it and decide whether you're ignoring it or going into it. A handy way just to think about all of this before you even get in, into any strategies or tips is just to think it is just effectively like mail and post was, which is why we can learn so much from that medium. This is everything you need to know about the basics of email marketing in 90 seconds. <sighs> Emails or electronic messages, these typically land in your inbox. Your inbox is something that an email service provider gives to you so that you can transact electronic messages with other people and other businesses. Emails typically have a from line, that is the person who sent you the email. They have a subject line. That is the thing that the email is about. They also typically have preview text or a secondary subject line, also known as white text. This is just a preview of what the email actually contains. Some email service providers let you see the preview text. Some email service providers do not. There are multiple purposes for an email. One is to actually just send a message to a person. That's great. Some businesses do that. Some business will pay you to do that. This is typically called cold email outreach. That is something that you can get paid for. And often it involves just simply reaching out to people that you get the email addresses for and then sending messages to to them so that you can acquire their business and make them a client. That is one type of email. Another type of email is a newsletter. What is a newsletter? A newsletter is just a piece of information, content, a blog post, something like that, that is sent to people and designed to engage people directly where they are rather than forcing them to go to a website. The whole purpose of a newsletter is to engage, to inform, to delight, to instruct. But ultimately, the whole purpose of doing all that is to get them to eventually convert and sell on something later. Beyond newsletters, you also have uh, what are called lifts or dedicated, as in this is a piece of content or copy that is dedicated to your list. What is a list? It is the list of email addresses that a business owns that you have acquired over time through nefarious or legitimate means. Uh, you can also do list rentals, as in you will somebody has acquired all these email addresses and you say, hey, I have a thing to sell. Would you mind sending this email to your list for me, driving traffic to my offer so that I can sell them that thing? And a list off owner will typically go, okay. The whole purpose of a lift or dedicated is to get a person from their email box to lift onto the next thing. That is typically a sales page or product page. So those are lifts. Then there are also just direct sales pieces of copy. Uh, and these are emails that are typically more common in e-commerce. And the whole difference between a lift and an e-commerce email is that the e-commerce email is typically doing a lot more of the selling than a lift is. A lift, the whole purpose is to get the click. A sales email is designed to actually sell people on something. Here are your important KPIs. Open rate, that is the percentage of people on the list who have opened your email. If you have a high open rate, it means your subject line was awesome. Good job. Click through rate. That is the number of people who have clicked a link inside of that email. They have gone from the email and lifted onto the sales page or whatever you were trying to drive traffic to or whatever that business is trying to drive traffic to. It's often shortened uh, to CTR. The other important thing is conversions. That is how many people opened, clicked, and then went on to buy something. Oftentimes a business will not give you conversion data because that is tracked completely separately and it's often very hard to ascribe uh, conversions to a particular email copywriter. For that reason, email copywriters often do not get royalties. I would say 95% of the time, uh, but as, that is something that we can talk about later. And that is, as far as I know, literally everything that somebody needs to know about emails. Email marketing, you just did it. <laughs> All right, well, join us next month for another copy that's I think we can unpack everything Sean said for the next 40 minutes or so. The difference between like 
all right, you can write an email and hey, this is something that's going to actually get people to click, click through at a high rate. But it does come down to some of that finesse and being able to envision like what it's actually like to sit there and receive the email. One of the biggest mistakes that I see that juniors will make with emails, they will write emails the same as everyone else. And unless you are in a position where your emails can be very direct, so for example, there's a lot of e-commerce emails where, and we discussed this on the show before, you can just say 50% off summer sale buy now. That can be a subject line that absolutely kills because you're talking to a very direct audience who have purchased before from your store and you know that they're frequent buyers, especially for like cold emails when either you're pitching for yourself or you're pitching on behalf of a client, like trying to get more leads or whatever. The biggest mistake I see is you will write the same exact stuff in the same exact way with the same exact formulas as everyone else is writing because everyone mm -hmm. who needs to write emails will type in best cold email formulas on Google and they will go onto the top 10 list. They assume like, oh right, there must be a way to write emails. So I should stick to that like orthodox way of doing it. But actually, if you think about how you interact with emails, if you see something that you know is just gonna be a sale, someone trying to give you something you don't want, even if it's a best practice and everyone else uses it, like, are you gonna open that email? No, you're not. An email needs to be, and I will stress this point, needs to be different. It needs to be an interrupt for someone. Don't just think, oh, right, I have to write an email in a certain way. It has to be like a sales email because most of the time they will not get opened. When we say it needs to be something different from what they're used to seeing. That doesn't mean that you need to invent a completely new way of speaking that no one's ever seen before because you want it to be comprehensive, like not inc incomprehensible. So for example, one thing that's really effective in my space is like, I write emails to lots of old people. Old people really don't like feeling like they're being sold on something, but old people love getting emails that feel like they're from a friend that they haven't spoken to in ages. And so one sort of style or one sort of like format that I use a lot is like that, hey, personal message from a friend that is referencing like a specific event or something that they've come to. Because even though that is like not a new thing, it is something that is salient to them outside of that sort of sales space. And so if you can put them in that context, you can deliver that same sort of like sales message or call to action without having them raise their car. One other thing that I wanted to mention, especially for cold emails, that list quality really, really, really matters. Like uh, the more specific you can get both in your offers and the services that you're providing and the more specific you can segment your audience, the more success you're going to get with cold email. I'm in charge of marketing for a SaaS company and like I see so many cold emails that are basically saying the same thing. They're not specific at all. And oftentimes I literally feel like you haven't even researched my company and you haven't even uh, checked if your solution matters to my company. So like if you can do that beforehand, like if you can prepare your list better and like really search for companies uh, or businesses or small businesses that fit your target audience and then also research them and personalize your emails, you're gonna have a much higher success rate. I've noticed this in people that come into the patreon.com slash the copy that show, they'll ask questions like, hey, can you critique my PAS email? Hey, can you critique my ADA email? They'll have these templates in their mind as a sort of like genre of things. Anybody who's uh, watched the full version of my interview with Daniel Throssell, uh, my mortal nemesis, we talked a lot about like why formulas like that are actually sort of a death knell for email copywriters. Uh, they basically shunt you into a template. And once you can be shunted into something, just like your prospect will ignore you if they recognize it, once you are writing to a template like that, you know, the PAS email stands for Problem Agitate Solution. So, you know, do you have penis hernias? Well, <laughs> A life with penis hernias is an awful life, and 98% uh, of people have penis hernias and you don't want them. But we have, we fortunately, we have a solution. Click here to find the details. There, that, that's a, that's a, that's a PAS email. I don't like that, obviously, and I don't like ADA either. ADA stands for Attention, Interest, Desire, Action. I definitely would recommend, like, if you are a member of the Patreon.com slash the Copy That Show, um, or if you want to follow us on YouTube.com slash Copy That, go check out that interview because we talk pretty extensively about like why formulas like that are kind of a trap and why you want to go for like a more vague style formula uh, rather than a more prescriptive like box you in style of formula. These are all just 
things marketers have invented to make things a little bit easier for them in a certain circumstance, and then also to market their own courses to say, hey, you want to master ADA, you want to master whatever, um, like you need this, uh, which is why I always try and keep copy when I'm thinking about it. And when you kind of break it down into mechanical pieces, I always try and keep it goal oriented. So it's more like, this is the kind of thing you want to do in this section, following a very specific formula like ADA beyond that and saying, right, you have to talk about uh, their desire, for example. It's like, well, do you? Or is it just, no, you need to get them to click onto the page and you do that however you can. It's really just think about their purpose, right? And like, especially if you're, if you're looking at selling anything or converting people, like all you want to do with your subject lines is open the email, right? And you obviously yeah. you can't say anything to get someone to open an email. It needs to be relevant, right? But like your pur like the purpose of your subject line is just to get the open. And then with your body copy, your purpose is just to get the click through, right? Like if you think in that way, rather than I need 40 characters or I need to use this formula or that formula, it becomes so much easier to just write all kinds of different emails. What makes us different is we go head first into the fact that we don't have a singular prescription. We aren't going to tell you that there is only one thing. We aren't going to tell you that this thing always works and you should always do this thing. Everything depends. Everything is contextual and getting money depends on your ability to learn how to navigate the vicissitudes and differences that you are going to encounter with each and every single client on each and every single day. One of us should make a masterclass about emails. Hmm, and then weave in some of the stuff that we're talking about today into that. That sounds wow. like a good idea. I don't know. That sounds like a lot of work and I, I'm not sure which one of us would be suited for that. Hmm. If only some of it was already done. I guess people are just going to have to stay tuned for the future when <laughs> uh, we are in fact going to have a long video about email marketing. It's really, really important to just always look at the context of what you're doing. It's like if you just ask yourself the simple question, does this make sense? You can prevent yourself from making a lot of stupid mistakes, right? So yeah. does it make sense to educate someone that you don't know, a complete stranger, during a cold email? Like, would you walk up to someone and tell them about the history and benefits of shower curtains? You wouldn't, right? It's like, you need to just keep asking yourself, does this make sense? Like, am I doing something weird? Is this like socially appropriate? Is this what people expect when they speak with you? If you do that, like you can avoid a lot of those damaging emails, right? You can ask yourself, is this gonna be annoying? So if someone is at the point at which they could write a competent email and they're thinking, okay, I wanna take this to the next level, where do you guys think that they should focus their attention next? Start looking at what happens. If you're not getting enough open rates, start working on your headlines. Try different things and like try to find different ways and be creative and try different headlines and see if, that you, if you get more open rates, right? Learn from that. If you then start getting open rates, but nobody, I don't know, books a meeting with you or nobody clicks on the link that you provide in there, start improving the body copy, right? So it's like you tweak and you iterate and you try to improve your process until you start getting hits, right? Until you start getting conversions. I mean, for one, sign up to every single email list you can find on the internet. The spammy ones, the not spammy ones, businesses, newsletters, literally everything that you can find that you're even remotely interested in, and even some things that you're not. Once you do that, you need to start building a few separate swipe files. One thing that I didn't mention during my speed run is that every business has different email sequences and every business has emails for different purposes. An email asking somebody to confirm their email address, what's called double opt-in, that style of writing is going to be different from a regular marketing left. A welcome email to a newsletter or info publishing business needs to have some things that are not going to be in a typical what they would send on the daily. And a welcome email needs to both instruct, it needs to delight, it needs to engage, it needs to provide and fulfill. And it, if you're good, it needs to upsell as well. And so like learning how to do all of that is challenging. It's hard. Learn how to use an email service provider. You can just pick one. Start with something like MailChimp, go on to their tutorials, which are free online. There'll be people who just have videos on, on YouTube as well. And just learn like what an email service provider is like. Like learn what the software is, learn how campaigns get built out, how sequences get built, learn what the different lingo is. When you actually come to 
pitch yourself to a business or a business asks you about your services, it's not like, you know, all rainbows and fairies where it's like, oh yeah, just write the copy. We'll deal with everything else. Most businesses will be like, oh, cool. Um, so you deal with everything email then. Nice. You, you do the HubSpot, you do the MailChimp, you build the email, you add some design to it. You make sure that it goes to the right pages. You set them out and build the campaign. Like a lot of businesses will expect you to do that. And even if they don't, it's good to know that anyway, because when you're working with other people, you need to understand the limitations of campaigns. That also like opens the door to retainer deals, right? It's like a lot mm -hmm. of businesses might be like, all right, we need like uh, an email sequence or we might need a couple of emails. Can you write them for, I don't know, 75 bucks per email? And you're like, sure, great. But like, if you can do that, but if you can also do the delivery of those emails, if you can use the software, if you can do the whole process, then you can't, then you don't only have to pitch, you know, email copywriting, but you can actually pitch a whole service. And if you can pitch a service, you can ask a monthly retainer. If you can say, I can handle all your email marketing, handle the software, do the writing, you can suddenly ask, I don't know, three grand a month for doing that, mm -hmm. right? It's a lot more digestible and it's a lot more attractive as an offer to offer the whole A to Z process than to just offer one tiny piece of it. Just like go one step removed. And here's what I mean. Like, for example, if you get hired by an e-commerce business to write emails, typically there will be an expectation, but not always, that you will also be able to do some of the design work that goes into these mm -hmm. emails, like learning how to like do some basic, basic, basic design work, learning how to like manage and market to an email list. The whole point of learning this stuff is to increase the number of services you can provide to a business so that you get paid more, which is always nice. It also reduces the friction to hiring you. Like for example, if they're like, cool, you're gonna write emails for us, can you also design them? Well, you wanna be able to say yes. So learn that, go do that. If you're just trying to get a toehold in email marketing, you can get started with just writing the copy, but to actually enhance your skills, go back to the things I just listed and look for resources. It is almost like doing an episode on language in that like, it's it's like, ah, oh, how do you use language in marketing? And it's like, well, I define what you mean. It's like the only thing where it's still personal and it's still something they have on them and you can get it in front of them any time of the day. <clears throat> and they're always, probably always gonna see it. Other stuff like ads on Facebook or Google they have to search a specific term. They have to be scrolling for a certain amount of time. Like the, the algorithm has to decide, yep, I want this. And outside of um, what Sean was talking about in deliverability, it is just the case of you're getting it in front of someone, how, how convincing is it? And that's gonna depend. So when we talk about emails, and this is exactly why we're gonna create a whole resource for it, is that there, there are so many different routes and avenues and it depends what you wanna do, which is why I said at the beginning, Rod echoed it, Luke referenced it again, and Sean has said it in his uh, talks. The most important thing is goal. Like, what is the goal of this email? Just start there. That is the number one thing. Start with anything. You just need to ask, what is this email trying to do? You need to know what it's being used for. Is this a sales campaign? Is this to try and build a relationship beyond just sales? Is this try to re-engage someone? Only from there can you actually reverse engineer what you should do. I feel like th this was a pretty good show. Like this, we're coming quickly mm. to like the end. Do you guys have anything else that you want to say? Uh, guys, I, uh, I'm i gonna drop off. I got another meeting now. So you guys can continue, obviously. Uh, someone in the chat said, Sean is all about dick this morning. And you know what, they're spot on. Is there any morning he's not about dick? The dick is just always on my mind. If you are watching this show right now, I want you to know that even if you are physically alone, you don't have to be spiritually alone. There is more to copy that than us on Twitch. When you are feeling downtrodden and like the rest of your life is going to be spent writing copy aimlessly without the love of, of another person, you can go to youtube.com slash copy that and check out tons of bonus content we have um, because we have tons and tons of new videos every month that we post that we just don't talk about here because we have other things to talk about. We have recently shorts that are really funny. You can see Alex say words that I cannot repeat right now because they would get us banned from Twitch. I don't you like that. You can check out other videos. Extended Makes me episodes. sound very racist. Well, that's going to be up to our discerning viewers to, to figure out. Um, you can check out interviews, uh, interviews with 
um, famous copywriters and just really good copywriters that we know, love, and appreciate, as well as previous episodes of Copy That. And if that is not enough for you, if in those dark moments of life, you see all that bonus content and think, but I wish there were more, there is more, because you can go to patreon.com slash the copy that show and become a patron and get access to even more bonus content, including uncut episodes of the show, like uh, Sean was saying earlier. And if you subscribe to the Patreon, to the premium tier, you can become a premium member and get access to Alex's e-commerce series where he is building the entire e-commerce store from zero to multi-billion dollar enterprise. You will be a part of that journey. Thank you very much for joining us. It, it, I mean, we wouldn't do this if it weren't for you all. So thank you very much. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.